Tis the season to be jolly if you are a Sonic fan, for this year we are getting plenty of Sonic related content. If you want to play as Amy Rose in the classic games, now you can with Sonic Origins Plus. If you want to play as the main Sonic cast in 3D, at last you finally can with the upcoming updates for Sonic Frontiers. And perhaps one of the most surprising of all is Sonic Superstars, a full brand new classic styled adventuring game that can be played with up to three of your friends. Sonic Superstars looks like a well presented game and I am hopeful that it will be a fun experience. However, I've already given my first impressions in a previous video. The point of this one is to go over the things I would really want to see, as well as the things I really don't want to see. Ultimately, the game is already finished, so I know this won't make much of an impact on what turns out, but I thought it would be fun to just go over the possibilities and anticipations of the entire thing. Let us begin with something hopeful. One of the major things I want from Sonic Superstars is to have the game offer a sizable amount of content. It seems very likely the game probably has eight zones. However, that doesn't mean that they'll be short. And I'm hoping the runtime of this game can at least hit three and a half hours. If it does manage to do this, that means Sonic Superstars is going to be a longer game than the average Sonic Forces playthrough, which, Considering the objectives of these two titles is kind of funny, but regardless, if it's longer than Sonic Forces, that's going to be a huge plus. Because Sonic Forces, while short, also isn't very enjoyable to play. So if you've got a game that's more enjoyable and it lasts for longer, there's not too much to complain about. Though, it does bring up one crucial criticism that may or may not become valid once the full game is in our hands and that is the price of the game itself. Sonic Forces was a disappointment, but you can also pick it up for a very low price. This game is being full priced on its release, so even if it was slightly over Sonic Forces runtime, it would be hard pressed to be worth that value unless it's replayable. And what replayability means in this context is you have multiple reasons to play the game over again. One example of this in its smallest form would be that Sonic runs and Knuckles can climb on walls. So perhaps you would want to play the game again as Knuckles because he's got a different moveset. Though the differences in the playable characters is not as extreme in the classics as it is in a game such as, let's say, Sonic Adventure 2. So, a fair few people who might usually get replayability from multiplayer characters may not see as much of a reason in the classic style of games. But that's not the only way to create reasons to come back. Levels can have different pathways, something the classics really enjoyed to use such as a high path if you're good at platforming because it's hard to maintain, a neutral path that's sort of middle of the road, and then a lower, harder path if you've kept on failing and makes your life difficult. Some would criticize that because the way that's structured is if you're already bad at the game, you get an even harder experience, but that's just the way rewarding level design works out. If you want to challenge the player, there has to be a punishment as well as a reward. Regardless of that, Replayable levels are levels that cannot be beaten in two seconds without a serious amount of skill, as well as having multiple pathways that are interesting but cannot all be explored in one go. Combine that with multiple playable characters that interact with different ways, and then you start getting more of a reason to come back to the game. Especially if you can give some characters exclusive areas or entire stages, like Sonic Mania did, for example, with Knuckles in Mirage Saloon. And I think there was a database leak somewhere for this game that suggests Amy Rose might have a unique level. I don't know if Knuckles will. It would be really strange to give one to Amy and not for Knuckles when it really was Knuckles' thing. Point is, there looks like there are signs we will be getting that form of replayability. So when you add all of those things together, as well as the base game hopefully being quite fun, that's where you can get your replayability, even if the runtime is only three hours and a half on a normal playthrough. Another big hope for this game is that every character gets access to their super forms. You might think it's a no brainer, but sometimes these games restrict it to just Sonic, regardless of what previous titles have done. 
I'm not sure they would do it here, but instead my worry is actually if we have access to super forms at all. I know we have the new Chaos powers, where each Chaos Emerald grants the characters a new ability, which is cool. But the question is, will we still be able to use all seven at once to go super? I've not heard words of it either way. If I was forced to make a choice, I would assume the answer is yes, we can go super, but you never know. It might be considered a distraction for what they're trying to do in this game. Regardless, let's assume we can all go super. Even under that scenario, I would hope that each of the characters are able to access a true final story, a secret boss that's usually only accessible with the super form. But in the past, only Sonic the Hedgehog has been able to do them. Whether it's the Sonic 3 and Knuckles fight in the Doomsday Zone, or if it's in Sonic Mania with the match between Heavy King and Dr. Robotnik, where only Super Sonic can take part at the end. I really do hope that, for one, there is a secret boss at the end of the game, because it just gives you a reward for collecting the emeralds, but also that anyone can take part. There's a chance this will happen because this game is multiplayer and it would be really weird if the other players were forced to stop playing so that the Sonic one can do all the fun that they work together to reach. So hopefully this is going to be a thing, but you never know for sure. We've seen Sega become more willing to engage with extra content post-release in their recent Sonic titles, even in Sonic Forces, although they did try to charge for Super Sonic in that game, so let's not talk about that. But yes, we've seen the Sonic Frontiers an excellent model of supporting the game up to a year, if not more, after it's been released, with free content coming out. And it's quite possible that we could get something like that for Sonic Superstars as well. As most of you know, Amy Rose has a new skin based on her modern appearance that you'll get if you've joined up to their subscribe messenger. And it would be possible, therefore, to get other skins released into the game as well. Whether it's through a reward system by collecting stuff in-game, or if it's through other special events, just like with Amy's costume. Either way, I think that would be a welcomed addition, as long as it's done within reason. What do I mean by this? Well, at the end of the day, they are skins, so I would not expect huge overhauls to the characters' movesets or animations. It's probably only a visual change. And that means that if you put certain cosmetics over a character that don't really fit, it could really jumble up the experience. Of course, you're not paying for it and it's optional, so a lot of people probably wouldn't think that matters. That's just my opinion. So for instance, let's say they make a skin of Sonic wearing his clothes from the OVA. Well, you could just slap that on and it shouldn't make much of a difference. But then let's say there's a skin where it's Mighty the Armadillo. Who do you skin him over? If you skin him over Sonic, he'll get the drop dash, which kind of looks like his move from Mania. If you put him over Knuckles, then he'll have the ability to break object, but he'll also be able to glide and climb, which might be odd. Again, it doesn't really matter. It's just that some of them can be a bit weird or figuring out who gets what. It is a good opportunity though, to see some faces that you otherwise probably wouldn't see. The dark side of this though, and something I genuinely don't want to see, is for an appearance of a character such as Shadow the Hedgehog to show up in Sonic Superstars as a skin. Now for a start, getting these skins is already a stretch and it would be really nice if that happens, but it's not guaranteed. But beyond that, I actually wouldn't want to see Shadow at all in the classic game because I think it just goes against a lot of what his design stands for. He was made in the adventure era and his design is about being sleek and cool and dark. And every single time I've seen the fan community come up with a classic shadow, which obviously is trying to follow the design philosophies of classic Sonic and his others. I just hate the design. I think it looks bad. And also, from a character point of view, it makes no sense because Shadow is 50 years older than the other Sonic cast members. Uh, of course, they could just scrap that, but okay, great, we're taking even more character away from Shadow because he definitely needs more of that happening. And then what's going to happen? He's not going to have any of his arc story. Is he just going to be a completely different character? Because if the answer is yes, why make it Shadow to begin with? If he's not going to have his backstory, if he's not going to be the 50 years old difference, if he's not even going to look the same, why make it Shadow anyway? Just, just leave him alone and enjoy it with someone else, you know? 
I understand that some Shadow fans might be annoyed at that sort of opinion, be like, well, we just want to play and we just have some fun. And that's great, and if that happens, then good for you. But for the reasons I've stated, I would rather just not see Shadow there, to be honest. His character's already a mess, and I think he just needs to have some dedicated efforts sorting him out, rather than shoving him into places he doesn't need to be in until he gets a bit more of a solid foundation. One final want for Sonic Superstars is to have an optional mode, such as a challenge mode. I already know that we're getting that battle mode somehow in this game, but I don't know what it entails, other than it's the only form of online multiplayer. And so I do hope it's both fun and engaging, so that we have reason to play it over and over. But regardless of how that turns out, a challenge mode where there are special shorter levels, a lot like they did in Sonic Origins, where you can complete the challenge and get some kind of a reward would be nice just so that you've got other ways to test your skills without necessarily having to go through the whole game again as well as not repeating the game's levels over and over again it's just a small short but fun way of adding that little bit of replayable spice into the greater collection Still, those are my major do's and don'ts for Sonic Superstars. Overall, I'm already quite interested and positive on what this game's going to be. So all of these are just small tweaks to make it even better. What about you though? What's your opinion? Did you get impressed by the trailer? Do you have your own ideas? Do you dislike the ones I've shared with you here today? Let me know in the comments down below. But that will be it for this video, so thank you for watching it all the way to the end, it really does help out the channel, and if you'd like to further support me, feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you have a great day, and to see you next time. This is the Mighty Emperor, signing off.